G'day, I'm John, and this is my Rolls Royce Mark 1 Avon gas turbine engine. This engine was built in the very early 1950s. This particular engine was used in the English Electric Canberra. It was one of the two engines that plane had. So what I'll do now is give a brief description on the main components of the engine and a rough idea of how it functions. I'll start at the front here, then work my way down to the rear of the engine. Okay, we're at the front of the engine now. Under this cover is the starter. And this is a cartridge type starter. Um, Rolls-Royce call them a turbo starter. So I've got one that's a spare, that's got the cover off it. So later on I'll, I'll explain to how the cover, I'll give you a good look at that and explain how that works. This is where the cartridge goes in. It gets loaded in there and then inserted into the front of the starter, ready for the start process. These are the exhausts for the starter, which will be self-evident later on. These are the uh, variable guide vanes at the front of the engine, so they're in different positions while the engine's running for start-up and high power, etc. They're operated by a ram on the opposite side, which I'll show you shortly. Okay, these three things here, these three valves and there's three of the opposite side, are called bleed valves. They're connected directly to the internals of the compressor section. This one has 12 stages of compressor in there. So they're bleeding air off on start-up, and up until maximum RPM. It takes a load off the compressor and helps with acceleration. They'll remain open until you get to around the six and a half thousand revs, I think it is. Then they'll close and you'll get maximum thrust. They'll open again if needed for hard acceleration. This unit here is the acceleration control unit. That slows down the rate at which the fuel gets pumped into the engine to stop an overheating situation at the rear of the engine. If you try to accelerate too hard, this will slow it down so you can't overfuel the engine. Right, so we're moving our way along. Up on top here is the high energy ignition module. This engine has two. They provide the spark for the ignition for the kerosene or the jet fuel, which is further down here. Um, the, the engine has two, one on top here, one on the opposite side. Unfortunately, one of mine works at the moment. I'm trying to track down another one, so if you've got one, give me a yell. So now we've got the fuel pumps. So this is the fuel section here, two fuel pumps. One pump alone is enough to run the engine. They've got two that run together. If one fails for some reason, it automatically disconnects and the engine continues running on the one fuel pump. They're a multi-piston uh, swash plate type pump inside. So we're into the combustion chamber section now. The air's come in under high velocity, it's been pressurised into this section here and it starts fitting into the combustion chambers or combustion cans. There's uh, fuel spraying jets just in one here and one there on each one of those. That's where the fuel gets injected in into the combustion can which is actually inside this. The ignition module lights a igniter plug which is down the bottom there. That can and one the opposite side of the first ones to ignite, then the flame jumps through these tubes here. It links them all up so the flame starts down there and goes to that one, that one, until they're all up and burning. So these little gadgets here, they, inter they join the combustion chambers to each other. So the flame, as I said before, the flame can go from one to the next one. There's little rings in there and they're heat proof. These little things here are there in case any fuel pools inside the combustion chamber. The fuel that pools in there will run into this one, runs down to the next one, down to the bottom and down to, the, to a valve which is normally open. So when the engine's not running, the valve is open. Any fuel that builds up will exit out of the, out of the engine and out of the aircraft. When the engine's running, the pressure of the, in the combustion, in the um, compressor section, closes the valve and seals it off. So no, no combustion or anything leaks out the back of it. Okay, we're up the business end of the engine now. So this is the rear end. These are the turbines. It's got two turbine wheels up in there. So, this outside section here is double skin, so because it's so hot in there, there's, there's air from the compressor going through the, 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 the cavity there to stop that heat radiating out to the outside of the engine. It's insulated and it's double skin. Okay, we're over the other side of the engine now. Not quite as much going on over here. So I've got the interchamber connectors as before and the, the, the drain valves. Um, we've got accessory drive takeoff point. There's a rotating coupling under there for generators, etc. This is the other ignition, ignition module to match the one on top. 
This is the oil cooler. Um, this is the sump for the engine. It, it goes right around underneath. I'll check the oil. That's where you check it. There it is. There's the oil, nice and clean. And again, the other three bleed valves you couldn't see from the opposite side. They all work. All six bleed valves work in unison. That's it. So I've got to connect up the control box, so fuel lines, cables, and electrical connections to make. I'll do that and get ready to start it, and we'll make some noise. So this is my spare starter. Again, that's where the cartridge goes in. You'll see that later on. That goes loads in there, goes in the front. You tighten it up. The electrical connection gets made through the whole process, so when you hit the start button, the charge goes down and electrically ignites the cartridge. The cartridge goes off, there's a, a, a chamber in here with a, with a valve and a rod. It pushes the rod out, which engages the drive this end into the front of the engine. At the same time, it opens the passageway up to this tube here and one in the bottom, and the charge goes down that tube into the insides in there where there's a turbine wheel that it spins up, which drives the reduction gearbox drives the engine. The exhaust from the cartridge comes out this one here and the other out, ex exit there. These are, this, that's a relief valve in case something goes wrong and there's an overpressurization inside. Okay, here we are ready to start. So this is the cartridge that's used for the starter. I'll take it out of the shipping container. That's the actual cartridge that goes in. Okay, now I'm going to install the start cartridge. That's locked in. That's it, ready to go.
Thank <laughs> you.